Private member's time. Member for Warner Monashi. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Mr. Speaker, International Women's Day has been recognized since 1911 and supported by countries around the world. It is a day when women are recognized for their achievements without regards to division, whether national, ethnic, linguistic, cultural, economic, or political. This year, the United Nations theme in Women in Leadership, Achieving an Equal Future in a COVID-19 World. On International Women's Day, we celebrate the achievements of all women. We strive to remove the barriers that prevent many from achieving their full potential. This year also marks the somber milestone as it is almost one year since the World Health Organization declared COVID outbreak a global pandemic. Celebrating International Women's Day takes on a new meaning. This year, as we celebrate the thousands of people who became everyday superheroes overnight to help us all see way through the pandemic. For many who already face systemic barriers or oppression, the pandemic has magnified the inequalities still exist among genders. This is further amplified for indigenous women, women of color, women with disabilities, and people in the two SLGBTQ plus communities. This is no secret that unfortunately, women around the world have been facing a great deal of injustices, inequalities, violence, and abuse for centuries. Many women have lost their lives facing violence, human trafficking, or standing up for themselves or for other women. When we hear about the word violence against women, most people often think about the physical abuse. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, women experience violence in many ways, from physical abuse to sexual assault, uh, sexual harassment from financial abuse or to trafficking, and in today's world, digital abuse like cyberbullying. The sad and harsh reality is that most women start to experience violence and abuse from childhood. And since many forms of violence against women and girls have been normalized, most of these incidents never get reported. Many women suffer silently, whether it's due to the fear, safety for themselves, their children, or due to the fear of being judged. Women in prominent positions are also affected by this, and many are reluctant to share what they face regularly, in fear of seeming vulnerable, Mr. Speaker. Let's identify and encourage women among us who are silently facing violence and lend them a helping hand to ensure their safety and well-being. COVID has disproportionately, disproportionately affected many women from indigenous and various ethnic backgrounds. Numbers are shocking, Mr. Speaker. We need all hands on the deck to address this serious and in many cases deadly issue. Mr. Speaker, there are more ways we can help uh, to end gender-based violence. It all starts from us. We can teach good values to our sons, grandsons, brothers, and nephews to respect women. We also need to encourage our daughters and granddaughters and nieces to speak up against violence and abuse. On International Women's Day, we should also reflect on and celebrate the incredible contributions of women to the world we know today. Women's History Day is especially important to me for being a mother of two beautiful daughters and as a woman of color in politics who broke many barriers. I strive to empower other women on leadership roles and help women facing domestic abuse and violence. I have personally faced many challenges myself and somewhat still facing at times despite being an empowered, educated, and a strong woman. I will end my remarks with hope and appreciation by applauding all the girls and women out there for making strides each day and by, bre by breaking many barriers, despite your tough journeys. Happy International Day to everyone. Thank you.